Uh, we've got Andre Walker. Welcome, Andre. Nice to see you. Good and see of you. course, we've got Chloe Dobbs, political commentator as well. Andre, you're kicking us off uh, with one again. When, when, whenever I get people in here and I go, I can't believe she's not there already. Shamima Begum. Yeah, absolutely. How has this not happened I so know. far? So, Shamima, she is, um, as you know, somebody who is desperate to come back to the United Kingdom. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether to put her in yeah. or everyone who supports her, but yes. it's only one person. It's only one. Yeah, only one person. But look, she is somebody who wants to come back to Britain to sit on the social for the rest of her life. Right. Uh, she also is somebody And to make who... some nice BBC podcasts, probably. Yeah, absolutely. They love she'll, her be, she'll be a hero to yeah, the political yeah. left. But the reason that she is not in the Islamic State is the Islamic State was defeated. Yes. And so the, the idea that we're going to have defeated terrorists back... Now, yeah. this company does not like me going on about her simply because I did want I did once say... Uh, I'd like to support local prosecutors yes. in seeking the, a fulsome penalty yeah. for her crimes. Yes. And apparently that didn't go down too well okay. in this building. Well, thanks for repeating it. <laughs> and now we can just edit it out again. So, you know, the point about her, though, is, is that, you know, there she is sitting in um, somewhere between Syria and the Levant, so nobody's quite sure exactly yep. where she is, except for everybody that always goes to interview her. doesn't seem to have any difficulty finding her. Um, but, yeah, I mean, she's now been told, I think, once and for all, that she can't come back, right? I'm not sure about the um, the immigration laws in Loth Island. I mean, we can send people there, but maybe some of the others would object to her being there. Well, the, the, the big question is whether they'll accept a Bangladeshi passport at Loth Island Airport. Well, that's the problem. I mean, we've got Prince Andrew there already. We've got Giva Hofstadt. We've got Vladimir Putin. <laughs> uh, we've got Emperor Nero and Banksy. I mean, I mean, I don't know which one of those would welcome her the most. I mean, she might, like all of the asylum seekers coming here, start saying that she's, I don't know, scared of rocks on the island. Like, yeah. we've got... Uh, migrants saying they're scared of water, scared so they can't go on the Bibby Stockholm, yeah. even though they came here on a boat. Right. Uh, she'll come up with some kind of human rights I nonsense. I mean, she's missed a trick here, hasn't she? Because all she needs to do is become a Christian. And if she becomes a Christian, presumably, then the Church of England would bring her in um, and go, we're going to make you the Bishop of London. I cannot work right. out why there are so many gay Christians in Syria. I know. <laughs> and it's just amazing, yeah, really. It's, it's a new thing. It's just yeah. like it's like the, the mecca for gay Christians. <laughs> it's a new thing. Chloe, give us your first nominee. Hums are useless, or hums are useless, as hums I useless prefer as to as call him. he is him. now universally known. How yeah. is that not Perhaps somebody yeah, who's already been How is know. he not already in here? I but know. obviously, this week he is in the I mean, the Michael news. Jackson beat him to it, and so did Carol. <laughs> Of Orderman. Oh God! <laughs> wow. Just beat it. Quite a lineup in 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 Low Island. Yeah. But Hums are useless. He has literally turned Scotland this week into yeah. some kind of 1984 style yeah. hellhole. I right. was hoping mm. because it came out on April Fool's Day that it was just a joke. Yes. But came April second and the law was still there. Yeah. But nobody and can explain what the law is, and nobody even knows how you can prosecute. That is with why. It. Well, that is why it's so dangerous. Yeah. Because make it ambiguous enough. And people will be terrified to say anything because they don't know quite what is allowed yeah. and what is not right. allowed. Uh, you can also uh, make a report anonymously. I actually have. I call me a hypocrite because I have reported. Did you report Humsey. useless? I, I did Good. report him Excellent. anonymously. Yeah. Well, because Andre was talking about this the, the other week about yeah. how um, you had an, an incident somewhere where you just you flamed the, the, the authorities with all sorts of complaints, yeah. Yeah. and then they just get so slow. And the, and the they thing they is, police Scotland they have to investigate every single report that they get, but they haven't been given all the resources and extra staff to do so. So Police Scotland are struggling enough right. as it is right. to deal with crime in Scotland. All they're going to be doing is taking those resources and putting them little online the trolls, complaining my that J.K. Rowling said something on Twitter. My favourite bit of the story is the most complaints that have been put in about anyone have been put in about Humza Useless <laughs> because he made a speech back in 2020 uh, which was considered by many people to be quite racist, where he said, so, um, you know, everybody was too white and there were too many white people in too many offices of state. Even and, though, like, 96% of the Scottish population is white. Yeah, if there exactly. are more than 4% of politicians there that aren't white, then that's progressive. Yeah. But we seem to have this idea, both there and in seemingly every institution, even if you live in a 90-something percent yeah. white country, right. that it should be at least 50 percent BAME. I right. see this at universities all the time. So right. you know, at my, know, my old no university, sense. they're like, there are more white students than mm. BAME students here. Um, this is institutional racism. No, no, we just live in a mostly right. white country. Get over yeah. it, you idiot. Also, if it hasn't, no, it hasn't sort of passed muster with the old house of Mr Useless, you know, he's um, um, a man from an ethnic minority who's yep. running Scotland. 
Uh, Rishi Sunak is a man from an ethnic minority running Britain, and we've now got Vaughan Gething in Wales, a man from an ethnic minority running Wales. Well, there's, so there's going what he's got to argue about. If, if, if it's, it's all... It's highly disproportionate to me. If, it, <laughs> if it's all about race, if it's all about quotas, then legitimately somebody's going to turn around and say, of these people, and in the case of most of them, that, you know, they're good guys. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that Rishi Sunak's done a good job, but he's leading a bad government. But there is a legitimate right. If somebody says, we must have per a person mm. who's non-white, then somebody else is going to turn around and say, we must have somebody who's yeah, white. Exactly. But, but anyway, I can explain the law to you in Scotland. It's yeah. very, very simple. Okay. It's very, very simple. You have a human right to say something that somebody would find insulting, yeah. but you can't insult them. Right. It is illegal to insult them. Right. Makes so, perfect so sense. So anybody can be insulted, though. So, so, so the problem is then whether you're insulted or whether it's insulting is, is self-defining. insulted or offended? Is, what's the difference? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so it's something that people might find insulting, but you can't make it to them. Right. So I don't know. Look, you it's don't a dog's dinner. I mean, no. I don't, I'm not giving you a hard time here. Nobody knows because nobody can explain it. Even the police who were asked to investigate uh, all all of these things that were being said deliberately, provocatively by uh, J.K. Rowling, and we take our hat off to her for doing that, mm. you know, even they have now had to come out and say, actually, this doesn't cross the but, criminal but, threshold, but, but, so she hasn't committed any crime. But, Mike, are you not looking forward to me, you, uh, but Nigel Farage, Julia Hartley Brewer, all the lags on yeah. D-Wing at HMP yeah, yeah. Edinburgh? <laughs> it's oh. going to be great fun. Tragically, there's no room in any of Scotland's prisons because they've got so many criminals in them. Um, that they couldn't put us away anyway. I know, yeah. the judges are being told, don't put the rapists in jail, we haven't got enough space. Right. How about, how about Leave the, them in the public. How about they create a penal colony in the Caribbean yes. and we'll all go for a month a year? Absolutely <laughs> right. And they've already walked away, don't forget, from the thing about you can make these horrible insults and offensive remarks even by not being in Scotland, because if they're in Scotland, they read it or they saw it or they heard it, then it must be offensive yes. no you're matter not, where you are. Everywhere. They've now said that's probably not going to happen. So it was all over the place. Absolutely no, no, madness. Knows. And, and one thing I will just add before we end on that one yeah. is that the list of protected characteristics of uh, who you can uh, commit hate crimes against. Yes. Uh, transgender people are protected, right. but women are not. Women are not. So I'm... normally these lists they have gender, race, sexual orientation, yeah. etc. Gender isn't on there. Transgender identity is, but gender isn't. So Amazing. that looks like women. So you, you can't, can't so 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 women women with a vagina can be insulted, but women with a penis, yeah. you can't you can't insult. Well, I mean, right. women with a penis is yeah. a bit of an oxymoron, but uh, we won't. No, get I'm, I'm going with I'm going right. with the SNP yeah. definition. Yeah, with yeah. SNP. <laughs> well, I mean, it did for Nicola Sturgeon. Maybe with a bit of luck, it will do for Humsey Useless. <laughs> Amazingly, I'm just looking at the list. He's the first Scotsman who's been sent in there. Yeah. So incredible. Uh, you can have a nice long chat with Klaus Schwab. He's also in there as well. Um, your next one, Andre. I wanted to go with Ray Kroc. Yes. He's the bloke who, who took over uh, McDonald's and made it global. Right. I'm just sick. I'm sick of burger joints. I'm sick of pizza joints. Right. They've made me fat. No, that's rubbish. It's right. a beer. You, but, yeah. you don't but... have to go there. You know, It's not compulsory. <laughs> you know. no, I, just, I just think that we've got so much great food in this country and I'm yeah. sick of all the crap mm. that gets onto the high streets. And honestly, I've got another complaint, which is every single... High Street looks exactly the same yes. these days. I remember when I was a kid, and I'm not that old, where you'd go, oh, let's go to St Helens because it's going to be yeah. different to Warrington. Right. Liverpool's going to be different to Manchester. And now everywhere's the same. Yeah. And McDonald's started mm -hmm. it, and Ray Kroc uh, is the person responsible for the global rollout of McDonald's. It is a very successful company, and, of course, they would say uh, that's why we did so well, because what they managed to do People is it. give you something that you wanted and you can get the same thing in every country that you go to. That's right. Albeit with one or two sort of slight... There is, there is the big... There is the uh, the Economist Big Mac Index, isn't there? Yes, Where there they is. work out how much a Big yeah. Mac is in each country right. and it's an economic indicator. Yeah, I think it really they, is. I think what they've done to the third world is absolutely scandalous. These are areas where you had, like, little to no obesity whatsoever, like, less than right. 1%. Right. And then as soon as you had... Um, companies like Nestle and McDonald's come right. in. They just balloon mm. the populations. And a lot of the time, these are countries where they don't actually have the health care to properly deal with the problems that come from well, we such rubbish food. I mean, <laughs> well, well, I mean, I mean, I mean England is country. becoming a third world country. You, you know, we're actually sort of turning tide on the migrant problem, potentially, yeah. because England has turned into a third world country yeah. and they don't want to come here. Well, I've always had a theory about this, is that I think what time has come now for us to go to where the migrants are coming from and then we can make those nice places to live and they can all have Britain and we'll just leave it to them. I think I've got, I've got to be honest with you, I can't understand how people... I mean, imagine from... Loath Island, right? Now, there are parts of the world where people live in places that look like Loath Island, but they want to come here. And you're going, why? Yeah. What, do you, what do you want to come here for? Look at where, what you've got. 
But yeah, I, I just I just think to myself, that somebody goes, oh my God, my country is so awful, it's terrible. Oh, the oppression of women, the lack of democracy, the, the governmental corruption. Then they come to London and go, right, let's make it a bit more like home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think, well, what, what are you doing? We're literally just importing the third world's problems. Yes, exactly right. Um, you're going with the Bish. One of my favourites. I can't believe he's not in there either. Speaking of the migrants, yeah. Justin Welby, I've yes. absolutely had enough of him. I'm not even a Christian, and I am absolutely disgusted by how this. I'm not man even has sure he is to be Tainted honest. the reputation <laughs> of of the Christian faith. Yes. He cannot keep his mouth shut when he should. Right. Religion and politics are meant to be separate. Yet yeah, he's he's become a lord, and he, he's not just spoken out saying he doesn't like the government's policy right. on migration. He has said that the government's policy is against the judgment of God. Yeah. Do you not think that's a step too far? I would have thought so. I mean, so. I know you're supposedly the Archbishop of Canterbury, did, but, you know, did God mm. really send you a message and tell you, tell the government that their policy is yes. against my so judgment? No, he basically said that voting Tory makes you ungodly. Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, I mean, yeah. It, it, it is genuinely insane. And then we've se we've got all these migrants claiming that they're Christians mm. now, and of course they're getting away with it. Because right. what's Justin Welby going to do? Uh, tell them you can't convert? He, right. He'll happily go along with it because he thinks that we're just a lifeboat for the but entire I, I, but world. Hang on, let's let's just remember let's remember our friend Welby. Yeah. Uh, you know, an oil trader yeah. apparently interested yeah. in God. He sort of came um, to God later in life. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's right. After after he'd made an inor yeah. inordinately large amount of money, right. wants to shine up the reputation. Yeah, yeah. But how much has he? it up because he's going not. on and on and on about how much we don't help the poor working for a tax exempt business yeah. sorry church of one England. of the biggest <laughs> landowners in one the country. of the biggest landowners in the country they used to own the metro center in newcastle just yeah. as an example um and then of course he builds himself a personal library at lambeth palace yes this wow. costs 27 million pounds and I remember debating a bishop once, and he said, well, he's got a lot of books. Well, in that case... Yeah. But he wants Haven't us... we all, darling? He I wants mean, us to throw our... Library. He wants us to throw our homes open and throw our wallets open mm. to people, and he has no intention of doing it himself. I no. Think, Giant hypocrite. Yeah. Yeah. He's incredi Massive. incredibly selfish, and we haven't even got on yet. The migrant stuff is bad enough, but we haven't even got on yet to these supposed reparations. What, 100 million quid? Oh, yeah, quid? Wants some of Reparations. Um, to uh, well, the people who actually are proper because Christians apparently in we're many you know, horrendous colonialists. Right. And we need to give away but a lot of money. The, the, the people who have actually properly um, embraced Christianity and who operate as though they are actually in the Christian Church are in large part in Africa now, and mm. the people there are horrified by some of the woke stuff that he's come out with. So you know they're not very keen on on a gay marriage. They're not very no. keen um, on some of his attitudes towards abortion. They're not very keen on some of his attitudes towards migrants and towards you know reparations. They would rather stick to the Bible. Well, so no, let, let's, let's just be clear. 80% of the Anglican communion are black. Yeah. So what you are doing is taking the pound or two pound mm. that these people throw in the collection bowl and giving them yeah. to hard left charities yeah. to call them all evil right. for opposing gay marriage. That's literally what's happening. Yeah. So, so they'll probably so, just send the money to BLM and it will go on some more mansions for the... Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely shocking. Andre, you've got um, a popular figure for your <laughs> final uh, nomination. <laughs> I, debated, I quite like Michael O'Leary. I debated I this guy once. <laughs> I debated this guy once when we were, we were talking. He doesn't care, does he? No. He, he does was, not so, care. so just to be clear, just in case people don't know, he's the CEO of Ryanair. He's not actually the founder of it, but he basically is. Right. He's the person that rolled it out. I remember debating him once where he said that he wanted to have a competition for the next hidden charges right. that he could put in. And he was suggesting that you're going to pay a pound to go to the toilet. Yes, I remember. So I, so I said to him, well, in that case, why don't I... Would you object to me doing it in a bucket at the seat? Right. And he said, having, having had further thoughts, that's probably why we won't do it. Because <laughs> he said every hidden charge should be one you have to avoid. Now, I don't think he's going to go on to Loath Island. I don't know, but um, I don't know if you're going to admit him. Oh, no, but, they're all... As long as they're nominated, they're all admitted. Oh, they're all admitted? No, they're all there. I mean, I could give you a list of people that he would meet there, in, the, in addition to the ones that I've No, the problem, is, the problem is, Mike, his flight wouldn't make it to Loath Island. No, He'd no, be he, on a bus. No, no, he, he would land somewhere near Loath Island. <laughs> he'd have to take a boat there. You know, it wouldn't actually be in a Loath Island he'd be, official he'd, he'd be airport. Fly, he'd be fly, he's flying from Dublin yeah. to Loath Island Shannon Airport yeah. and getting a ferry. Well, I tell you, he's got kids. John Lund in there, he probably get on quite well with him. Oh, yeah. I mean, he runs his operations so much. I remember once uh, there was somebody I knew who worked for Buzz Airlines and they got taken over by Ryan. Yes. And they had a union meeting. Um, and Michael O'Leary came to address the union meeting and he said, Is anybody here in the union? They all put their hands up and he said, You're all fired. <laughs> <laughs>
I loved I loved when he he flew back from he flew back from the Grand National and apparently over the weekend at Aintree he'd had a winner and and he had all of his mates on his right earth flights and he goes because we've had a winner this weekend it's two free drinks yes. on the flight back. I remember that. <laughs> and the thing about Ryanair is that you know what you're getting. Yes. And I would I was in favour of the the version uh, of the offer he once made, which was to have a special flight where you could do standing room. Over. I actually thought, I that, thought was that was quite great. smart. You know, I thought it was quite I smart. Mind you don't that. like it, don't pay. Yeah, exactly. And also, I have to, I will give him some benefit of the doubt. He really hates Brexit and I don't like him for that. But I love the Ryanair memes. They yeah. are so good. Yeah. And they do always point out the fact, yes, we will annoy you and you'll all complain about our stupid charges, but you always come back no yeah. matter how much you say it. Because actually they're the, they're the airline that are least likely to be late because they get, they get fined so much money. He hates paying the fines. Uh, <laughs> Chloe, your final one. Dylan, Again, Dylan Mulvaney. Can't I believe this one's not in so there. This, this, is, beer this is probably the person that I loathe the most on You get on well list. with Prince Andrew. Probably, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Dylan Mulvaney is a man, yes, a and man... Vladimir Putin's with a there penis, well. not a woman. <laughs> a man who makes $2 million a year, supposedly, uh, just prancing around on TikTok. Who's paying this guy? Oh, well... I mean, I know about had... the stories, but after what happened and after Bud Light's disaster and Nike's disaster... Why would you pay him anything? Nike Olay Tampax. Tampax. You've got a man with a penis holding up boxes of tampons on TikTok advertising them. I mean, who is going to But I think, be but I think, by I that? think there is an argument in favour of bringing Dylan Mulvaney into your business. And the argument is that if you want access to finance on the international ca capital market, you need to get that ESG score up. Mm -hmm. If Dylan Mulvaney destroys one of your brands, then actually your business as a whole will benefit financially. Sad so state of affairs, so, so if I'm a manager, if I'm a manager of a company like Anheuser-Busch, mm. what I can do is I can throw Bud Light to the wall using I mean, Bill I'm not awful saying, beer. I'm not saying they've done it deliberately. It is pretty awful beer. Well, hey, look, £2.50 at Weatherspoons, baby. I'm happy. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah um, but you'll have to drink about 1,000 of them to get drunk. <laughs> yeah, that's, you true. Know, that's the problem. But, you, but, <laughs> but, if, but if you throw Bud Light to the wall then it's replaced by another beer within your portfolio. Yeah. Then you have more access to finance on the international markets. And you personally, having destroyed the company, will be somebody who will then uh, get jobs elsewhere more easily. And if it goes sure. wrong, just hand the bill to the shareholders. Mm. That's corporate American, that's corporate Britain. Well, well, I mean, speaking of business, one thing that I find really annoying about Dylan Mulvaney is for doing nothing aside from prancing around on TikTok. Right. He I'm has been idiotic. given a Forbes 30 Under 30 award. I'm sure there are plenty of other... Well, they'll be doing it for the same reasons under... Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and it's also like Woman of the Year award by oh, Attitude magazine. And it, it was their first yeah. ever Woman of the Year award and they couldn't even give it to someone with a uterus. I mean, it yeah. is absolutely I pathetic. I'll tell you what, what? Why don't, of the year. why don't you, you create Man of the Year and give it to Dylan Mulvaney? Yeah, well, I think <laughs> that would be one thing to do. I mean, who would be that brave? That would be the thing. <laughs> uh, guys, thank you very much indeed. Andre Walker, uh, Chloe Dobbs. Uh, that has been uh, Loathe Island. We've added another six names. It's getting busy over there.